The Human Place in the Cosmos by Max Schaler. Section 6 Of the two types of behavior which, as we saw, derive from instinctive behavior, the quote habitual and the quote intelligent ones, it is habitual behavior that is the third psychic form we distinguish, namely the quintessence of association, of reproduction, and of the conditioned reflex. That is, the ability which we designate as, quote, associative memory, bracket, mneme. This ability can by no means be found among all living things. Plants, as Aristotle already showed, do not have this ability. It must be attributed to all of those living beings whose behavior is slowly but steadily modified through an earlier behavior of the same type, a process directed by its usefulness to life and in meaningful ways. Here, the level on which behavior becomes more meaningful is strictly dependent on the number of trials or so-called trial movements. The fact that animals keep making spontaneous trials, bracket, including those of playing among young dogs and horses, for example, close bracket, and that they tend to reiterate them, whether they like to or not, shows that these are not behaviors based on memory, but on an inborn drive, bracket, the drive of reiteration, close bracket, which is the condition of all reproduction. But those movements that turned out to be successful by providing satisfaction to the drives and thus making an animal repeat them more often so that they, quote, fixate as successful movements rather than as unsuccessful ones, amount to what we refer to as the principle of, quote, success and, quote, error. Whenever we find this, we refer to the, quote, practice of habits or the, quote, acquisition of habits in a qualitative sense, depending on whether it is achieved by self-training or by the training of others, as when human beings are involved. It would be correct to assign these psychic and physiological abilities to all organic life, bracket as E. Herring and R. Semin meant to say, close bracket, if the behavior of living things were not only dependent on some immediately previous states of their organism, but also on their entire prehistory, so that life, in contrast to bracket phenomenal, death, would, strictly speaking, have no states of identical nature, and there would be no occurrences of identical causes and effects. But in the case mentioned, it would be incorrect to hold that in all life there is a specific influence of sense and motor types of behavior on a more trouble-free sequence of similar types of behavior. For in that case, all plant life is bereft of the above facts, and this must also be so because pouring itself totally outward, plant life does not have the capacity to, quote, report back its organic states to a center, bracket equals sensation, or a central motor system. The basis of associative memory is what I.E. Pavlov called a, quote, conditioned reflex. For instance, a dog does not secrete gastric juice only when food enters its stomach. This already happens when the dog hears the steps of someone who regularly gives him food. Gastric juice is secreted even when humans dream of the food they like. If one lets a signal repeatedly sound at the time a stimulus releases this kind of reaction, the reaction can take place even without a stimulus. These and similar cases are, quote, conditioned reflexes. The quote, laws of association are only a psychic analogy to a conditioned reflex. According to these laws of association, a complex of representations tends to reproduce itself and to complement missing components when a part of the complex, say a part related to the environment, 
is re relived in a sense or motor function. If a complex breaks up into several pieces, these pieces can, according to the law of, quote, contiguity and similarity, again join up with each other. The so-called laws of association pertinent to reproductions of representation follow from this. To be sure, we have here peculiar laws in psychic life, which, among higher animals, play an important role, especially among the vertebrates and mammals. Yet, research has also shown with certainty that there are never complete associations of single representations which would underlie only laws of, quote, contiguity and similarity, that is, which would underlie the partial identity between initial representations and earlier complexes. Just as there is no more of an occurrence in a completely isolated and always identical reflex of an organ situated in a determinable particular place, so also there is no, quote, pure sensation strictly proportionate to its stimulus, independent of all changing and determining drive attitudes and memories. Bracket. Every sensation is always a function of a stimulus and the attention drive. Close bracket. And there is no more a, quote, pure and isolated sensation, one strictly proportionate to its stimulus, than there is a, quote, pure association. All associative memory is under the sway of the drives, needs, and tasks, bracket, or under the compulsion of a trainer, close bracket, that determine them. All associative laws are probably only a matter of statistical rules, exactly as the laws of physics pertain to wholes of processes. But they do not pertain to elementary laws of psychic life, bracket, the stance of J. Locke, D. Hume, and J. S. Mill, and of associative psychology, close bracket. For this reason, all concepts of a, quote, pure sensation, or of associated reflexes, and so on, have the character of concepts having limits, which indicate only the direction of a certain kind of psychic or physiological change. More or less pure associations could be found at best in cases of a loss of the upper levels of a mental determinants, as in cases of associations of the external sounds of words during an interruption of thought. Genetically, this type of connectivity is so little an elementary state of affairs that it is only during the decline of psychic processes that they gradually turn closer and closer to the model of association, bracket, i.e., as a consequence of the diminution of the strength of the drives and of decreases of their differentiations, close bracket. One can see this in phenomena of changes that occur during old age. There are changes in handwriting, drawing, painting, and changes of speech. All of them have an increasingly additive but less uniform character, bracket, which means that the increasing lawfulness of association approximates senility and a feeble mind. Close bracket. By analogy, during old age, sensations get closer to, quote, pure sensation, proportionate to its relevant stimulus. Just as during the course of our lives, our organism approaches more and more the conditions of a mechanism, up to the point when it becomes a whole mechanism entirely, namely in death, so also our psychic life produces more and more habitual associations of representations and modes of comportment. Aging humans become more and more slaves of habits. Bracket, moreover, Associations of single representations genetically follow the complexes of associations which, on their part, are still closer to processes of instincts. Close bracket. Just as a plain perception of factual affairs without any surplus of fantasy and mythic lining is a late phenomenon in the psychic development of individuals and whole peoples, so also are all connections of association a late phenomenon. Indeed, the life of peoples still living in the early stages of their mythological period of youth, as well as the psychic life of young children, 
is grown over and covered up with original and spontaneous drive and wish fantasy. The connections of associations, bracket, physiologically very clearly localized in the brain, close bracket, are a late phenomenon. It is nothing less than an elementary phenomenon to which later on synthesis would be added by way of so-called relational thinking or of an oversoul. It is known today that associative memory is never, quote, pure, because there are hardly any associations that contain no intellectual factors. There is never a transition from associative random reactions to meaningful reactions that grow with the number of trials. Curves almost always show instabilities in the sense that the passage from random factors to meaningfulness is a little earlier than the pure principle of, quote, trial and error, as one would expect from probability rules, as if, so to speak, something like, quote, insight had been awakened during the numerous trials. The principle of associative memory is at work among all animals in some degree or other. It shows itself to be a direct consequence of the occurrence of the reflex arc and of a division of sensory and motor systems. But there are huge differences to be found in the distribution of associative memory. It is very small among typical instinct animals such as the anthropoda, with their chain-like and closed structure. By contrast, associative memory is most present among animals having a flexible and less rigid physical structure, with broad combinations of ever-new movements stemming from partial movements, like those among vertebrates and mammals. Among humans, the principle of association and reproduction has its widest extension. From the first moment of its inception, the principle relates to the imitation of actions and movements coming from affects and signals from members of the same species. Quote, imitation and quote, copying are specializations of the drive of repetition applied to the behavior and experiences of others in regard to the kinds of behavior and experiences of the subject itself and are the vapor, as it were, of all reproductive memory. It is the combination of both the phenomena of imitation and of copying that releases the important fact of, quote, tradition. Tradition is a new dimension which adds to biological, quote, inheritance, a new determination of the past animal behavior of the members of a species. This tradition, however, must be sharply distinguished from free, quote, recollection of the past, bracket, anamnesis, and from all tradition based on signs, sources, and documents, bracket, in short, from all knowledge of history, close bracket. Whereas the forms just mentioned are proper only to human beings, tradition does occur already in herds, packs, and other forms of animals. Herds, quote, learn what alpha animals show, and they hand it down to forthcoming generations. A certain, quote, progress, therefore, is already possible through tradition. Nevertheless, all real human development essentially rests on an increasing disintegration of said tradition. Only the human being can have conscious, quote, memories of individual events and unique experiences, and continuous identifications among a majority of acts of remembering toward one regular past event. Conscious memories are always a dissolution and, indeed, an annihilation of the lived tradition. Meanings that have come down to us are given as, quote, current, but they are not datable in time. They are effective on our present actions without, however, becoming objectively present. In tradition, the past is more suggested rather than, quote, known to us. 
The disintegration of the forces of tradition keeps increasing during human history. This is the result of human ratio, which continues to turn contents that came down to us into objects and thus throws them back, as it were, into the objective past, making new discoveries and inventions possible. The very slow disintegration of the effectiveness of all those forces, which make habit the foster mother of humans, is an essential part of history. The pressure exercised by tradition on the foreknowledge of our behavior also decreases with the progress of the intellectual discipline of history. The effectiveness of the associative principle in the structure of the psychic world corresponds at the same time to the disintegration of the instincts with their kind of, quote, sense, and to the process of centralization and simultaneous mechanization of organic life. Furthermore, this effectiveness of the associative principle means that an organic individual is increasingly detached from the ties it has to its species and from the rigidity of instincts devoid of a capacity for adaptation. It is because of the progress of this principle that an individual is able to adjust to new situations, which are no longer typical for the species concerned. The individual ceases to be a mere passageway of reproduction. While the principle of association is in relation to practical intelligence, bracket as we shall see, close bracket, still a relative principle of rigidity and habit, a quote, conservative principle, its relation to instincts is already a powerful tool of liberation. It creates an entirely new dimension of the enrichment of life. The same holds true for drives, feelings, and affects. Drives disengaged from instincts occur, relatively speaking, already among the higher animals. And along with this disengagement, there emerges the horizon of excessiveness. Drives become a possible source of pleasure quite independently of the demands of life as a whole. As long as the sexual drive for example, lies within the deep rhythm of the changes in nature that correspond to the rutting and heat seasons. This drive is an incorruptible servant of life. Disengaged from instinctive rhythms, however, the sexual drive becomes more and more of a self-determining source of pleasure. Already among the higher animals, especially among domesticated ones, this drive can obscure the meaning of its existence. Bracket, onanism, among apes and dogs, close bracket. Drive life is organically gauged to modes of behavior and to the goods in this world. But if it becomes a source of pleasure, as in hedonism, we have before us a late phase of decadence in the history of humans. Comportment solely directed to pleasure is decidedly a sign of aging in the lives of individuals and peoples as, for instance, an old drinker who, quote, savors every drop, and similar phenomena in erotic life would show. A sign of aging is also at hand when higher and lower functions of joy begin to separate from the conditions of the pleasures in having drive gratifications and when there is a state of enjoyment obscuring the vital and spiritual functions of joy. The quote, pleasure principle, therefore, is nothing original, as both hedonism and its companion, sensualism, asserted. Rather, it is a consequence of an increased associative intelligence. It is only with human beings that the possibility of separation of the drives from instinctive behavior and the capacity to isolate functions and states of pleasure take on the most incredible forms. It has been justifiably said that human beings can be more than animals and less than animals, but they can never be an animal.